Hi, my name is Bruce Boyd. I'm the founder of Building Our Youth Development, founded right here in the great city of Trenton, New Jersey. We're going to be listening to some of our students that have been in our um, satellite program, Girls of Grace, and drumming to a different beat. Uh, we're privileged to be here at the Trentonian today, and we thank them for the opportunity to put positive things on the front page and not so many of those negative, mean, grilling faces. So. We don't have a mean grilling face today. We have with us one of our first year students, and you are? My name is Tashia Brown. And Tashia, tell us a little about yourself. What school do you go to? Uh, I go to Dr. Martin Luther King Jewish School. And um, what grade are you in? I'm in I'm sixth grade. Sixth grade? Yeah. Are you going to pass to the seventh grade? Yeah. You better, that's right. So what, what extra um, curricular activities do you do? I do cheerleading and I do praise dancing for Christian Baptist Church. And you cheer? And I cheer me for Chair Pop Warner. Chair and Pop Warner? Yes. You like it? Yes. Do you do you cheer so quietly? No. Can you do us give us a cheer? Yeah. No. No. <laughs> so so Tashia, your brother uh, Ricky had joined the program, right? Yes. And your mom wanted something for you to do besides the cheering and besides the uh praise dancing, she wanted to work on your your uh, educational abilities as well, right? Yeah. So what did you think about the program? I thought it was good um, life experience. A good life experience? Yeah. So what did you um, think about when you were told that you were, did your mom tell you you were going to the program or did you want to be involved in the program? I wanted to be involved in the program. Okay, so go ahead. My mom um, wanted me to be in it too. Okay. During the summers, I think you go to uh, Project Smile or something like that? Yes. Yes. So now you have something for the summers to do, and you also have something to do for um, the fall and spring semesters, right? Um, so, you know, I wasn't privy to all the discussions over there with the girls of Grace. Tell us some things that took place over there. Um, we learned how to be an entrepreneur, and we, we also learned... Um, we learn how how to be a young lady and how to build our by shop and by being a lady. You learn how to be a lady. Yes. And what were some of the things that uh, you, you learned in being a lady? I learned how to like if you have kids, take care of them. And I learned how to how to be um, how to go to college. And I I think um. If I'm not mistaken, I'm sure that you guys went through the interview process, correct? Yes. Well, what was the interview process like? It was like um, when we were on the, on the TV show and we had to interview each other. Interview each other? So yes. you had to learn how to do what? How to interview each other, how to use a camera. Okay. Now, did you also learn how to become an entrepreneur? Yes. Do you think that was important? Yes. Why? Because a lot of people is an entrepreneur. Like, like I want to start my own daycare for young kids. Oh, and what made you want to start your own daycare? Because I like it for the little kids. Okay. And now you, um, being in the boy program, has taught you how to, um, the process is. Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, was it grueling or was it boring? Or did you have fun? I had fun. Yeah. Yes. So why was it fun for you? Because I learned a lot of new stuff in life. Okay. And most of the time you say, is most kids say learning um, is not fun. And did this program make learning fun for you? Yes. And could you uh, take some of those skills back and, and use them in your school? Yes. Did I, you? I learned some for school. Okay. Okay. So what else you want? Are you ready for the ball? You know we have this mentors ball yeah. coming up on Saturday. Are you ready for it? Yes. Yeah. You got your dress all picked out. Yes. What color is it? It's pink. Oh man, it's pink. Oh okay. What about the ties? Did you? Uh, how, what do you think about girls wearing ties? I think it's okay. Yeah. Yes. Okay. All right. So my kids, is there any parting words you want to? Uh, Tell the listeners about the boy program. Would you want anyone else to be in it? Yes. Why? Because I think they, that they can learn a lot like you did. Okay. 
All right, thank you, Rocky. It was a pleasure uh, having you on the show today. Next up, next up is uh. Next up, we have one of our quiet storms in the program. He typically sat in the back, but he was full of a lot of uh, um, discussion when it was his time to talk. Uh, we have, t tell the listeners who you are and where you come from. Uh, hi, my name is Makai Simmons. Uh, I live in New Jersey, Hamilton. And I'm 13 years old. I run a Christ Middle School and I'm in eighth grade. Okay. Christ Middle School, that's in Hamilton, right? Um, when I met you, it was probably you came into the spring semester and you came at one of our last events and we had a conversation and you was looking like, oh my gosh, what is my mom getting me into with this bald head guy? And, uh, with it, so w what was your thought process? When I first came here, I didn't want to come. I thought it was going to be boring. But when I first came, like, got used to it, it was so fun to be here. Like, I wanted to be here every day. My mom got home every Monday. I got I was already dressed, and she said, "Oh, but God, what are you doing? You already dressed." She was so happy with me that I kind of changed from this program. You you kind of changed. Well, I did program. change. <laughs> so, what made it exciting for you? Um, the people that I met, and uh, the things that I've learned, they're like the life changing, and I can use those to teach my kids in the half time. Okay, so we're sitting here in the Trentonian today, and we see some adults over here. We see Joey at the computer. Who's the smartest person in the room? Me. You're the smartest person. Yes. But Joey, he has a college degree. How are you smart? How are you the smartest person? I'm just brilliant. I think myself as the greatest person. In the world. That's right. That's right. Now, a few weeks ago, we didn't think like that, though, did you? No. 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 We had this conversation, and we had to realize that. Your potential is within you, and your belief is in you, right? And once you have that belief, you don't have to fall for anything, correct? Yes. Okay. So now that you're into the program and um, you feel that it's fun, what were some of the life-changing things that took place for you? Well, when I first came here, I did not know how to tie tie, and that's the first thing you have to do when you're in a job. You have to learn how to tie tie and like learn how to dress and. Like, when I first came here, he told me the story of some guy that came to board, uh, out of 25 people, he got a job interview from coming to board. And, like, I can use that from my uh, college degree mm -hmm. and my college first name to uh, work through life. Okay. So, were you there when we did the table etiquette? Yes. Did you Did you know what table etiquette was before Boyd? No. What, what did you think? What, what did you think about that lesson? I thought that was great because I used to eat like a slob, basically, <laughs> and now I eat like a gentleman. Okay, okay. And are you? Did you practice at home? Because, yes. Because you know we're going to have this ball, and we don't want you using your soup spoon when you need to use your fork, right? Yes. All right. So, um, what else? Did, did you go? Were you privy to any of the trips that we went on? Uh, I went to uh, Temple University trip. That's basically the only one I went to. Okay, Arca Arcadia. Yes. The Black Male Symposium. Yeah. What, what did you think about that? I thought that was a great experience because I met a lot of uh, black people that went to Arcadia and they got a job experience. And they tell me uh, their stories from uh, growing up and to, to being a uh, racist. And um, you, were, you were in the barbershop talk, right? Yes. At, at the uh, Black Male Symposium. Yes. Um, so when they talk about young black males going to jail and young black males sagging their pants, you don't sag your pants. No. Do you? Do you feel like uh, you're a quitter? No, not at all. Not at all. So when you're wearing your shirt and tie, how how does it make you feel? It makes me feel great because I know I'm not like one of those people out there that sag their pants and wear their hats backwards. I'm one of the guys that. Act like gentlemen, so I am a gentleman. Okay, so during the whole um, process, when uh, we had a conversation about Trayvon Martin, do you believe that, in your belief, and do you believe that he would have been uh, uh, stalked by this uh, Zimmerman guy had he been looking like you? No, not at all. It, he just had a say that he was selling spams, and he was like a hoodlum uh, robbing from the the store. When he only wanted a bad experience. 
Right, right. So you understand that dressing is a part of the male makeup. Yes. Right. And and um, I'm glad that you you understand that and that uh, the whole part about wearing a hat to the back um, is, is excellent. What are you going to take away from this program this year? I'm going to take away all the lessons that I learned from tying a tie to being a gentleman and to learn how to take care of people and not just wreck your mom, stuff like that. Okay. What about the history that you learned? I learned a lot of stuff. I learned that we created math and science, and I learned that I'm very intelligent. Mm -hmm. And yeah. So, understanding that. You the, when we learned about the creation of math and the creation of our history, um, did you go to school with a different perspective on education? Yes. Yeah. Are you Are your grades moving up? Yes. Yes. Okay. And um, are you ready for the mentors ball? Yes. Now, is this the first time you're wearing a tuxedo to such an event? Uh, yeah, it is. Yeah. So, are you ready? Yes. All right. Thank you for having me um, coming on to the show today, Makai Simmons. Thank you. Next up, we have uh, one of our outspoken young ladies. Now, I know your mama have a big voice, a loud voice. What about you? Yes. Tell us about you. Um, I'm YK Cooper. I go to Reynolds Middle School. I'm in seventh grade. I'm 12 years old. Are you smart? Yes. Who's the smartest person in the room? I am. You sure about that? Yes. I saw some of your your, your mom. She be bragging on you. So she be putting these uh these uh report cards up that you get all these A's and stuff like that. Did I get some money for getting some grades? Yes. Why was was that important to you? Yes. Why was that important? Because I worked hard to achieve that money, and I feel that the money was my motivation, and I feel successful. Okay. So, um, Wakia, coming into the program this year, we had your brother Tyrone in the program last year. So, um, wasn't it you or somebody, your mom, somebody said, where's the girls program? Everybody was in something but you, right? Yes. Right. So, we developed the Girls of Grace just for you. <laughs> um, what, was, what was your thought process going into the Girls of Grace? Um... I was like really excited because I the only thing I did was sports and most of the girls and my on my team go to out of Hamilton school so I didn't have any like close by like close friends and it was really fun and I thought I could learn new stuff with like people my age. Um, okay. So it was fun. So learning is fun? Yes. Did we make it fun for you? Yes. Did my wife do a good job? Yes. Well, tell us, you know, I couldn't be in the room. Every time I try to look in the door, you kicked me out of the room. What was going on over there? We learned how to cope as young ladies together because most of the young ladies out on the street are against each other and not, like, teaming up. And we learn lessons to become a better young lady. And, yeah. Okay. Um you guys did something with the um, the interview, the entrepreneur. You had to create your own business? Yeah. What business yeah. did you create? We didn't exactly create our own business, but we had a, a scenario. Okay. Of one of them, I think, was like this water bottle. Okay. And we had to create a name for a water bottle, something that cool the water bottle could do. And me and my partner, we chose that the water bottle would keep the water warm, like, throughout the whole thing because people usually have cold weather but what if you need to learn motor in a similar way that you're in. Okay. Um, did you learn any interviewing skills as well? Yeah, we learned to always keep your eyes on the person you're talking to and sometimes talk to the camera as well and to project your voice. Okay. Um, besides your sports, how did this differ for you? It was Kind of like, instead of like running around all the time, we were getting to know each other better because we could relate to the scenarios that Miss Boyd would give us. And I think it was more fun than my sports because 
like well, you had a competitive edge. I know you guys yeah. were competing over there yeah. at, some, at times with some different things. So you brought that competitive edge in. Mm -hmm. um, so um, I believe you guys have some guest speakers come in. Yes. Tell us about that because that's when it was rowdy over there mm -hmm. sometimes. Who? Um, I know one person was Yolanda Robinson, right? Yeah. From Living a Powerful Life, uh -huh. right? In her shoes. Tell me about that. We got older mentors to come in. They were older ladies to help us with our lessons. And we learned a lot about more about coping together as young women because we, in the end, we're going to need each other no matter how much we argue. And we also learned about how to dress like a lady, how to act like a lady, and how to present yourself to others from their experience since they're older and kind of been through that. Okay, okay. So um, she did something with some shoes before. Yeah, right? we had a runway show. A runway show. What, what, what was that? We had to bring in our favorite pair of shoes or shoes with like memory, with a lot of memory of something that good that happened. And we had to present our shoes, like give a presentation with the shoes. Okay. Well, well what was your presentation on? Um, I had brought in sneakers. And I wore those same sneakers when I did a poem, when I did Mother the Sun by Langston Hughes in front of my school for poetry. I wore those shoes. Mother to Sun. We just studied that today at Cal Walter School. I love that poem. Can you recite it? Some. Some. Let's start it. Let me hear okay. Well, son, I'll tell you. Life for me ain't been no Christmas there. It had tacks in it and splinters and boards torn up in places with no carpet on the floor, there. But all the time, I's been a climbing on and reaching landings and turning corners and sometimes going in the dark where there ain't been no light. So boy, don't you turn back. Don't you sit down on the steps because you find it's kind of harder. Don't you fall now for I still go on late. I still climb. And life for me ain't been no crystal stair. There you go. Life for me has not been a crystal stair. And I wanted to thank you because you taught your class something with that poem. Yeah. Why'd you pick Langston Hughes? It was for Black History, mm -hmm. and I know that he's a very well-known poem poet, mm -hmm. and um, I like the poem because it shows that like you shouldn't drop out of school at a young age because it hasn't been easy for anyone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, I talked to your mom today, and I heard you have this fabulous dress with a ball. <laughs> Tell us about that dress. Um, it took me. 10 hours to find that dress. 10 hours? Yeah. And I got it from EXO, Oxford Valley Mall. It's purple, my favorite color, with silver sequins, and I like glitter. So. Okay. Okay. And um, are you ready? You saw Ty last year in his tuxedo, so he yeah. was a little jealous, right? <laughs> you just wanted to uh, showcase the, the great brain that Wakia has. Mm -hmm. And you know that, um, you know, we give out money, right? Yeah. Oh, you think you're in a running for that um, top prize? Yes. Yeah? yeah, you think so? <laughs> hmm, you got to wait till um, Saturday to find out. So is there any part in words you want to tell our audience about Boyd? And should people join? Sure. I think people should join. I've been campaigning Boyd at my school, telling like young girls that they should really come because it is fun. It's not all just learning. It really is fun. And like Boyd is an ingredient in your recipe of success. It's very, very good. Okay. I'm gonna have to use that. Can I take that one? Yeah. Boyd is your ingredient in the recipe for success. Oh man, I gotta change my tagline. <laughs> Joy, yeah, write that one down for me. <laughs> but um, I, I want to thank you and uh, for you coming onto the show you. and you telling our listeners what a, a great time you had in building our youth development. And can't wait to see how far you go next year in the program. Thank you. Next up, we have our guy Gavin McKenzie. Gavin comes straight from the what they call it, straight from yard, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Gavin, um, I met you last year over yes, at Dumb Middle School, correct? Yes, sir. Yeah. Um, so, tell us about yourself. Uh, my name is Gavin McKenzie. I go to Dunn Middle School. I like playing basketball, football. Um, I want to go to um, Morehouse in the future. Um, I want a career in um, graphic design. And if I don't get that, I would like to go to college at LSU for football. 
Come on, people from Jamaica playing football, really? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. So, um, Gavin, um, when I met you over at Dunn Middle School, you shined, yes, right? Sir. We were in the um, Kids Bridge program, right? Mm -hmm. And the first day I met you, you were so respectful and um, so articulate. And I said, I need you to be in another program. Yes, and sir. what did you think? Uh, at first, I was like, oh, one, one more day out of my week. I don't think it's worth it, like, to go one more day out of my week to do something like that. Mm -hmm. I didn't I didn't think it was really going to be fun until I started, like, learning stuff. And I realized how fun it was. So um, your dad had to kind of bring you kicking and screaming the first couple of weeks, right? Uh, <laughs> I want to say kicking and screaming. It wasn't like that. It was like, Gavin, you got to go start going to this program. And I was just like, okay. And one of the first things I said to you is you're going to have to wear a shirt and a tie. How did yes, you sir. feel about that? I was like, oh, okay. Because normally I don't wear a shirt and a tie because I don't really like it. At first, I didn't like it. Like, it used to squeeze my neck. I was like, oh, my gosh, it's going to feel so bad. I started getting used to it, so I was like, oh, it kind of feels good now. Okay. So you started coming to the program. Uh, what experiences, because this is your second year in the program, yes, tell the listeners some places that you have gone in the um, program. We took two trips to New York. Um we went to Arcadia University. Uh, um, I can't remember anything else. Well, the trip to New York. What what did we do in New York? Oh, um, we went to um this black, this African American um, burial ground. I think it was. Mm -hmm. And they basically informed us that um back then they had people buried in Manhattan, and like they built all the buildings over them, which they didn't know. And then the guy was built, actually acting out everything that was happening. And then we saw some statues. We saw um, some people, like an act on like a presentation. And it basically made you think about like how you spend your time wisely and see how you wonder why things was back then, and how things are now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, Gary, we also, I, I believe you went to the uh, Duke Ellington. Did you go on that no, one? No. You didn't go to the Duke Ellington Jazz? No. Oh yes, 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 I did. I yes. thought so. Yes, I did. What, what did you what, what did you think about that? Oh, that it your was first? pretty cool. Yeah, it was my first time actually listening to jazz, and then um, we basically started um listening to how Duke Ellington started to make jazz, and he actually made it in a pretty cool, but at the same time odd way. Mm -hmm. He listened to his vent, and the noises that came out of that, he was usually like make it. Out of it. So I was like, oh, okay. This started making me thinking differently and started like thinking how I can make stuff differently in different ways rather than just going out one way like everybody else does. Go against the odd. Go against all odds and go against the norm. That's what right, I started right. So, yeah, he right. talked about going against the, uh, we had uh, Wynton Marcellus was teaching. Yes, sir. And so he was talking about how, how also Duke Ellington was using colors in music. And there was different hues that came across the orchestra when they were playing. Uh, and um, so that was a great experience for you. We also then went over to, we went to the 911 memorial as well. So how did you feel when we stepped onto the uh, grounds of the 911 uh, memorial? Oh, I, at first I had to take a moment to look back and basically like try to um, um, like respect the people who died there not taking everything for granted. And then you look at the 9-11 memorial, you look at it, it's like, oh my God, it's pretty cool. But at the same time, you got to think how much work went, on, went, went into it. And you see like it's a big waterfall, but the building used to stand up like, oh, okay, it's pretty cool. Because it looks like, you could just tell how much work they put into that. Like, it's just so cool. Okay. All right. So you also went to the Black Mill Symposium. Um, symposium and yes, you went with your father. Yes, sir. How was that experience when going to the Black Metal Symposium with your father? Uh, basically, most of the times on all the trips we go to with Boyd, my dad always comes. So it wasn't like different because I always go with him. But at the same time, it made me pay more attention and realize that, oh, if I mess up, he's right behind me hmm. to see what I'm doing. So basically made me pay more attention to what was going on. It made me think differently. It also made me take, like, it made me... Um, try to put everything I learned there into my everyday life because he was gonna. He actually came to every class I went to, so now 
he was he realized what we did there mm -hmm. and asked me, Oh, are you putting anything you learned there into your everyday life? And I could and I could respond like yes, I did. Okay, okay. So um if I was to say being in Boyd what? Finish it. Being in Boyd definitely changed my life because I did not know how to tie a tie, did not know how to tie a bow tie, did not know how to present myself properly to people. They not know how to fill out a resume. Basically, teach me how to be a better man in life. They teach me that I could go to college and make and make college one of my priorities in the future. To say, oh, I'm Gavin McKenzie. I want to go to college in the future. So, Gavin, do you want to sag your pants? No, sir. Why not? Never will. It's just nasty. I don't, oh. I don't think people should do it. It's just real. How about wearing your hat to the back? I don't wear hats, period. <laughs> okay. So, um, Gavin, um, thinking about being in Boyd, have you you won a lot of money last year. Yes, sir. Talk about how much money did you win in the program uh, last year? Um, at least, I think it was close to $500. It was close to $500, and I was like, oh, okay, I got to have a grand in my pocket, so what am I going to do? <laughs> so I was like, yo. This program's worth it. It's worth every Monday and Tuesday out of the week. I won four hundred fifty dollars. I was like, yes, more money in my pocket. But did you? Did, was it just given to you? No, I had to earn it. Um, all did. the competitions. I think we did at least um, seven. I came first in everything except the one, which I found kind of odd. And I think a lot of people did too. <laughs> but I was really thankful for it. And that second place actually. Um, actually um, taught me something. Never doubt your opposition because I was getting too cocky at first. I was like, oh, mm -hmm. one, six, one six out of seven, why can't I win the, second, the seventh one? Then I came second. So I was like, okay, I got to step my game up. Yeah, you you were in the in a competition a lot of the times. You yes, you you set the standard and you set the bar for the competitions because you put in the hard work. Yes, um, I still remember one of them was uh, the 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 cookies it was yes, talk sir. about the cookie that you oh made. um the cookies we wait the cookies oh um, yeah, um yeah the cookies that was a pretty interesting one because uh for me i didn't really make the cookies but mm -hmm. i went out and i bought like um chips ahoy and a whole bunch of other ones made from keebler and i was like oh look at this i worked at keebler and i made this mm -hmm. to make people actually think that um um i'm the guy who made these look how good they came from and look how good they're going to be in the future. And then I basically looked at um, the sales for Keebler back, like when I was working for them, and how it went up from how it was down. So that basically made people think that, oh, this guy's pretty good. He can make our sales go. So I was like, okay, that really topped it off. I think I, just, I thought it topped it off. So part of what the competitions entail was that you had to do some research. Yes, sir. So, uh, did you know about how to research companies and everything before coming into Boyd? Uh, basically, what I'll do is go to Google and type in Keebler. But then again, I'm not like I did not find it reasonable to read like four or five pages. I didn't. I just re really read like the first five lines, and I was like, "Oh, this is getting boring." So I didn't really read it, and then I was just start inferring of what happened after the first five lines of the story and then after being in Boyd it made me realize that everything that they say is important everything they write down they have a reason to write that down so I started reading everything else and I started finding a lot of things I didn't know before about companies. So now now you're ready to could you could you start your own company tomorrow if you wanted to? Yes sir. Yes, sir. And I, I really appreciate that because, Gavin, again, you are one of the shining stars in the program, but it came with a lot of work. He was a little yes, rust, rusty around the edges when we first <laughs> met you, right? <laughs> but uh, as you uh, matured into the program, we could see yes, your maturation, yes, um, especially with the bow tie. Why the bow tie? I still don't know how to do it. Um, Today I looked in the mirror, white shirt. I was like, should I wear my red tie? I tied it. Didn't look right. So I was like, I took this off. So in my closet, check out the bow tie, put it on. I was like, I like this look. It's looking pretty good. All I need now is the jacket and looks like the tux. So I was like, yeah, this goes together perfectly to me. I was like, all right, I'll just wear this for today. So that lesson on, um, did you feel like the lesson on learning about the style of men clothing and dress yes, sir. was uh, appropriate? Yes, sir. What did you gain from the, the... Basically, I learned how to tie a bow tie, which I did not know how to tie before. Like, I found it pretty odd. 
to tie a bow tie, like why make another, why tie a bow tie and we could just tie another, like an ordinary tie. And then after I started tying, I was like, oh, I like how this looks. I'll start rocking this from now on. And which I do, and it looks pretty good on me. So I was like, okay. Okay. So as we as we close out, Gavin, I, I want to thank you for coming on the show. And you, you're you're 12 years old. Yes, sir. 12 years old. And um, what can you take away from year two of drumming to a different beat? Um, I could basically say that it taught me a lot more than I did the first year coming aboard, and it basically added on to my knowledge, which I already gained from the first year. And now the second year basically just topped it off and put me in a different level. I basically think that um, I was in the middle of being a man. Now I think I'm, I'm, act, I'm actually at the top. I think I'm a man for my age. I'm not saying I'm a man compared to other men. Men, how old they are mm -hmm. now. I'm saying I'm a man for being 12 years old, about to be 13. So like I set the standard for most of people my age. And the standard is? The standard. And the standard is? The standard. And the standard is? The standard. But it's also? The standard. Excellence. Oh, excellence, yeah. And, yeah. If, you're, and if you are excellence, then? People around me can be excellent. That's right. We appreciate you for coming on today. Yes, sir. Thank you, um, Mr. McKenzie. All right, thank you. All right, there you have it. You have four boys students that are going off to do some pretty fabulous things, and they they have started the foundation. And I'm glad that the Trentonian has highlighted these young people from Hamilton and from Trenton. And you can see, folks, you can see that our future is bright. So put on your your, your shades because it's bright and just keep on helping us and we can keep on producing greatness right here in the city of Trenton. Thank you.